guys, Olive here. Here in the United States, we are getting ready to celebrate our Thanksgiving holiday. What we do on this holiday is prepare a very large meal and share it with the people that we love. And since this holiday generally ends up being all about that meal, I thought it would be very appropriate for today's Nonfiction November video on the eve of Thanksgiving to talk to you about five different food memoirs that I have read and really loved in the past to get you into the Thanksgiving spirit, or if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, then just getting you into the eating spirit, I guess. So let's hop right into the book recommendations. The first one I would like to recommend to you is called Sous Chef, 24 Hours on the Line by Michael Gibney. This book is probably the most unique out of all five books that I'm going to be recommending to you in today's video. It's unique because the author, Michael Gibney, who was a trained chef in addition to a writer, uses the second person tense to take you through one very busy Friday night cooking on the line in an upscale Manhattan French restaurant. By doing so, he puts you directly into the shoes of the sous chef, who is the second in command in the kitchen directly below the chef. I would have never guessed that using the second person perspective would ever be effective in a book, but the way it's used in this book puts you on the line in a way that I've never felt any food memoir do before. It gives you a sense of the anxiety and the drama, but also the rush and the satisfaction of it. In a good number of books that I have read on food and the food industry, they have discussed the sensation that chefs get on the line, where they're completely on autopilot, that their movements are fluid and rehearsed as to be kind of machine-like. They're totally focused on the work in front of them while hearing orders. It's almost like they're not even in control of themselves anymore. And never before have I seen that played out so clearly as it was in this book, because you're being put directly into their shoes. You are put directly into that mode of thinking. It made this book so cool and incredibly memorable. The second book that I would like to recommend you in this video is called A Year of Russian Feasts by Catherine Shermantev Jones. This is a mixture of travel memoir and cookbook. From 1991 to 1994, Shermantev Jones, who is of Russian descent, lived in Russia. There she met and befriended a lot of Russian people. She took part in a lot of Russian cultural rituals and connected with her own heritage through Russian food. This book is an overview of that experience. It is arranged by season, so you're quite literally going through the year with the author. And as the year goes on, you see the different Russian cultural rituals that, in my opinion at least, are very accurately displayed in this book. And she talks a lot about the food and drink that Russians enjoy during these events. And then she goes one step further to provide you with the recipes for most of the things that she's talking about in the book in case you want to enjoy them yourself. I will admit that the recipes are less functional than they are a charming element to make you feel more included as a reader, but it is really nice that they were included and this is something I would certainly recommend if you're looking for a quiet and comforting exploration of a culture that's often seen to be more enigmatic than it actually is. And then I, of course, have to recommend the best known work by the late, great Anthony Bourdain, Kitchen Confidential. It turned out to be a really sad coincidence that I put this book on one of my TBRs this summer. I was actually listening to the audiobook when Bourdain's untimely death was announced, but honestly it made my experience of this book all the more meaningful, especially because Bourdain showed no fear in showing exactly who he was and what the food industry is like. It's no secret that chefs have egos. It may even be a necessary ingredient in what makes a great chef. But all the ways in which Bourdain shows flexibility, a willingness to learn, and a tremendous amount of grit in this memoir, to me, balance out all of those expected levels of arrogance. But he was also a sharp and observant writer who sliced through all the crap to give you as the reader a real picture of what working in a kitchen is really like. Crude, intense, but invigorating. I should mention that a new edition of Kitchen Confidential was just recently released. It has some handwritten notes of Anthony Bourdain's within it. I was paging through it at my local bookstore and while I've always had some mixed feelings about re-releases of books whose author has passed away very, very recently, they're often very blatant money grabs looking to profit off of someone else's tragedy, I must admit 
that those handwritten notes definitely do add something. The fourth food memoir that I would like to recommend to you in this video is called Blood, Bones, and Butter, The Inadvertent Education of a Reluctant Chef by Gabrielle Hamilton. I wanted to make a point to discuss this book immediately following Kitchen Confidential, and I will explain why in a moment. But first, I'll say that this book was one of my very favorite reads of Nonfiction November last year, and this is Hamilton's memoir starting with her early life and running all the way up to her running her successful New York City restaurant Prune. Along the way we learn about Hamilton's family difficulties, we learn about all the mistakes she made in her youth and how she accidentally fell into the restaurant industry. She also includes in a very raw way details about her cold marriage to an Italian man, her entry into motherhood, and the challenges of being a boss in a high pressure work environment like a restaurant. What I think is very important to note about this book is that in the most wonderful way, it has a very female vibe to it. It has that sense of strength and perseverance that I love about my fellow women. But as I mentioned with Anthony Bourdain, chefs have egos. And as such, they are not always the most likable people. However, I have seen far more criticism of Hamilton's book than I have ever seen about Bourdain's. And they are equally as raw, honest, and real in both of their memoirs. From all of the reviews that I have read and seen about this book, and I have taken in a lot of them by this point, I'm very, very interested in this, it seems as though just by being a woman, Hamilton is expected to cast her experience with a softer hue as to make it more palatable for everyone. I'm gonna let you draw your own conclusions about that one. You're obviously entitled to agree or disagree with me, but I will say this. Blood, Bones, and Butter is just as raw and honest as Kitchen Confidential is. It is just as well written, if not better, in my personal opinion. And Gabrielle Hamilton is equally as ambitious as Anthony Bourdain. They are both wonderful, powerful books and both are incredibly worth reading. And the last food memoir that I would like to recommend to you in today's video is Mastering the Art of Soviet Cooking, a memoir of food and longing by Anya von Bremsen. Of course, I had to mention this one in this video considering this is one of my very favorite nonfiction books. The title is a play off of Julia Child's French Cooking Bible, but instead takes on Soviet culture, history, and cuisine. Anya von Bremsen was born in the Soviet Union in 1963 and grew up in a communal apartment in Moscow, eating all of the staples of Soviet cuisine. This book is her memoir, but it also mixes in vital elements of Soviet history, of both culture and food, but also of critical political incidents that really give you a full picture of what Soviet life was like during this time. Later in her life, and thus later in the book, the author and her mother emigrate to the United States. This introduces her to a whole new way of life and a whole new cuisine, but it also starts to reframe the experience of her childhood spent in the Soviet Union using this new lens that she is acquiring. Von Bremsen is an extremely talented writer. She really excels at recounting all the different elements of Soviet history that she's talking about, but she also makes the flavors that she's describing absolutely sizzle on the page. She also happens to have a fabulous sense of humor. I still giggle thinking about some of the jokes she told in this book. So those are five different food memoirs that I personally really enjoyed. Being a foodie, I have of course read more than this, but none that I have enjoyed as much as I enjoyed these five. I do have many others on my TBR right now, so I would love to hear from you in the comment section below if there are any specific food memoirs that you really love, ones that you think I should prioritize. Or if you have read or now want to read any of the books that I discussed in today's video, you can also leave me a comment down below. Or if you'd prefer to connect on a different platform, I am on a variety of different places on social media. The links to all of my profiles are in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.